Valley. The Reverend Dr. Al Sharpton is on deck and getting ready to come to you. We'll take our break when we come back. It will be the Reverend Dr. Al Sharpton. All righty, Bill Griffin, president of the Men's Auxiliary and the New York City chapter, and Dawn Jones, head of the Political Action Committee, will bring you some announcements. Good morning, good morning. Please encourage the youth in your community and your family on your block. Please come out and join the Youth Move Huddle Young Dreamers of Today, Leaders of Tomorrow, meet every Monday at the House of Justice from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Free entry and dinner. Learn about related issues, share your opinions, and surround yourself with other dreamers of today aspiring to become leaders of tomorrow. NAN Youth Move is one of the youth movements implementing real change in this country. Please join us for inquiries, or if you are interested in holding uh, hosting a huddle, please email nanyouthhuddle at gmail.com. The Men's Auxiliary will meet here at the House of Justice at 1130 today. The National Action Network Sports Club basketball team will play in the Gladiator Summer Classic Basketball Tournament through August 12th at the Colonel Young Playground at 143rd Street and 5th Avenue behind the baseball field. The team will play today today, July 22nd at 2 p.m. An announcement uh, will be made each Sunday as a reminder. Please make sure to go out and support the NAN Youth Basketball Team. For further information, please contact Stan Mallory at 646-250-7309. Now, Don Jones, Chair of the Political Action Committee. Don Jones. Greetings, House of Justice, and happy Saturday. Thank you again for Dr. Lenora Falani for addressing us on this morning. The National Action Network New York City Chapter Political Action Committee join our monthly meetings right here at the House of Justice, 106 West 145th Street in the Village of Harlem. That's on today, July 22nd, 2017 at 11 o'clock a.m. The purpose of our meeting is planning of our fifth Saturday forum right here at the House of Justice on affordable housing on next Saturday, July 29th, and our voter registration table at Harlem Week. Have a blessed weekend. Thank you for your attention. That concludes the National Action Network announcement. We're back, brothers and sisters. You are listening to the National Action Network Saturday Action Rally coming to you on WLIB across the nation, streaming to you right now. I'd like you to get on your feet for the president and founder of the National Action Network, the Reverend Dr. Al Sharpton. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No justice, no, no justice, no what do we want, justice. what do we want, justice. what do we want, justice. when do we want it, 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 justice. hug the person next to you, tell them you love them.
National Action Network Change Choir. Give them a big hand. Give them a big hand. Certainly, we're happy to be with you another Saturday morning for the Saturday Action Rally. For you that are here live at the House of Justice, 106 West 145th Street in the village of Harlem, and for you that are listening live on 1190 WLIB AM in New York, you that are watching us on Facebook Live around the country at National Action Network, and in a few minutes we go live National Impact Network. Let us give a hand to our presider, Attorney Michael Hardy. and our Northeast Regional Coordinator, Minister Kirsten Ford. <laughs> One of the things I was speaking to someone this week who uh, listens to the radio broadcast every week and says, your, the Nan Choir sings, your change will come. And she said, so much is going wrong. I said, well, first of all, the only way you could ever be a change agent is you've got to first believe that you can make change. Some of you cancel your own progress because you don't believe you can make progress. If you go to the doctor expecting things are not going to get better, the doctor got to convince you before he can heal you. And I think that a lot of us stand in the way of our ability to make change because we really don't believe we can. I, I tell a lot of our young activists, leaders, Kirsten and, and Steve Marshall and Mayor Pat and others, that one of the reasons that I never give up is I've already seen what we could do. You know, I remember how we elected Dave Dinkins. That's why I believe we can elect blacks to run the city. I was involved both times we elected and re-elected Barack Obama. That's why I'm not intimidated by Donald Trump, because we've done that before. So a lot of y'all are and lack the self-confidence because you've never done nothing, which is why history is important. Because if you understand the people that you are, you understand the people you could be. I, 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 one of the things that is amazing to me is that a lot of us that have not achieved anything of worth in our generation look down on folk and generations ahead of us who did a lot more. We the new generation, all right. What y'all do? Let down Trump. <laughs> we the new thing. Well, what y'all do? About to lose health care? Well, our generation elected the black president re-elected them. Gave everybody health care. I mean, so a lot of what you should do is say, I'm the children of the generation that did that so I could do more than that. So we, uh, I want to say that for her because she's somewhere listening. For a change will come. You got to believe in that change. Very glad this morning to have with us, give a hand, Dr. Lenora Falani. Reverend Johnny Green of Impact and Mount Nebo Baptist Church. And of course, the godfather of the movement, the Reverend Bishop Dr. Herbert Daughtry. And I raised them, we're happy for everybody, but I wanted to raise them as special significant people in Radio Land to know they are in the house. But we have everybody. People get all the way. Reb didn't call my name. Would you do me a favor? Turn to the right. Shake hand person to your right and say, Reb is glad to see you this morning. <laughs> TV. 
Fiji. So I think that that satisfies everybody. So everybody can get comfortable. L let, let me say, and I, I want to say this as we get going. One of the things that is amazing to me is how we are so easily distracted from what is going on that pertains to us. One of the, the uh, people I was blessed with having to raise me was James Brown. And James Brown, one of the things he would always tell me, I would come to him, Mr. Brown, A, B, C, D. Mr. Brown, I heard this. Mr. Brown, did you hear about this? And he'd always say to me, mind your business. We go to a certain town, he could send for me. I was like a son to him, and we'd be going to wherever he, whatever venue he was going to play. And I said, yeah, I heard Al Green was here the other day. Reverend, are you with Al Green? No, mind your business. <laughs> and many of us are not qualified to give direction or leadership because we are distracted with everybody else's business but ours. They got us like hamsters just running around chasing our own tails because every day they are feeding you stuff that have nothing to do with your business while they are arguing about all and everything, our community is making no progress. And in many cases, because we are not attending to our business. I want to be real clear on that now. Mr. Ford called me, uh, Rev, they're doing so-and-so city council. Uh-huh. And you know, so and so and so, and talk about running for speaker, and and so and so and so is talking about they got an argument with so and so. Wait a minute, are they still drilling at LaGuardia? Are they still giving contracts as they dig up all these streets? Is there still high unemployment in our community? Are we a weak? Uh, 10 days from August 1st and we went through half the summer with our kids with no jobs. <laughs> when y'all get to that, call me back. I am not interested in other folks' business because they will entertain you to distract you while they cut up the contracts and do the billing and the development and soon you will wake up as the moving man is moving you out of your own place with gentrification while you somewhere minding business. Now, a lot of us was raised that way watching the story. I had an aunt. You couldn't call her in the daytime because my stories is on. Auntie, so and so, my, my, boy, you better call me after my story. <laughs> and if my mama left me with her, I had to watch. I'm talking about the old story. God light, search for the mob. I still remember them as the world turns. <laughs> we couldn't get a sandwich, glass of milk, nothing until those stories went off. And you done got grown watching other folks' stories. And she be messing up all day, worried about, oh, Lord, what's going to happen tomorrow, that child. <laughs> and you grown, worried about what's going to happen to something that ain't got nothing to do with you. You more caught up 
in what somebody else's child going to go through and your child in the next room and you don't even know what they're going through. Hello. And they got y'all with that right now. A lot of y'all caught up in these soap operas that they call television shows, reality shows. Oprah station. Then you got housewife stuff. All kind of. You got housewife of Joe and housewife of New York. and how, They got all kind of house. They got everybody's housewife. Ain't none of them got a house. <laughs> then they got the green leaf for the church crowd. With the bishop and the son and the whatever. And while all of that is going on, they are taking things from you. And they drilling in your neighborhood with your son unemployed. And you just turning up the volume rather than understand, wait a minute, that noise outside ought to be my job. Wonder what all that noise is. I can't hear my story. That noise outside is your removal. That noise outside is your political impotence. That noise outside is you do not have the aptitude to understand what's going on. And until we get to that, we will never be able to continue to make progress. When we deal with, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of stuff this weekend as we organize and galvanize toward what we're doing in August. When we deal with studying those that we come behind, one of the greatest disciplines they had was the ability to remain focused. If you lose focus, you will never achieve nothing. One of the things I learned, I work out every morning now. One of the best things to do is to gauge your workout. I'm going to stay on the elliptical stair step 20 minutes. Well, the reason that's good is if you got one of them machines that will tell you the time. It doesn't matter what you put the earphones on, watch the news and all that. You only went 16 minutes. You did not achieve what you were doing. You will never get yourself in shape physically unless you set target goals and stay focused on it. Well, the same thing in life. You got to set your goal and stay focused and mind your business. Our business in this town is some economic empowerment that is supplanted and protected by political power. You don't need people in office if they're not protecting your political interests. We're joined now by our audience around the nation and the world on Impact Network. We're glad to be with you another Saturday. Let me say also, a lot of people have written us and emailed us saying that I have situations, I got problems, I need Nash Action Network to help me, and I need y'all to pray for me, because we have a prayer team here. We are activists that pray. Well, I want you to know you can call us anytime throughout the broadcast. You can look right at the bottom of the screen. You can call right now, it's 877 877 Six two six four six five one, and people pray with you. People take your complaints, and you that want to join Nash Action Network and support us, you can do it any time throughout the broadcast. Somebody said, "Red Mal, I, I'm kind of old. I don't know about these computers. You keep giving out the website. Call. Just get the phone. I don't care if it's a rotary phone. Call eight seven seven six two six four six five one. And we will put in the website what you need. We'll do it for you right on the phone. 
I want to encourage every minister. I'm getting ready this afternoon. As soon as I go off the air, I'm flying to Virginia. I'll be preaching for the 150th church anniversary of Mount Olive Baptist Church right outside of Norfolk, Virginia. Then I'm going on into Atlanta tonight. I'm preaching men's day tomorrow at Hunter Street Baptist Church, Reverend Tucson Hill, the church pastored by Reverend Dr. Ralph Abernathy. And I'll be doing Politics Nation, my MSNBC show, 8 in the morning from Atlanta, and then preach for Reverend Hill, and then flying into Washington, where I will join others on Monday for the funeral services for Mrs. Gertrude Brown, the mother-in-law, Reverend Jesse Jackson, who I knew her all my life. So I got to do three cities in two days. But as I roll, I'm dealing with saying to ministers that they must meet us in Washington, August 28th. Why? Because, first of all, when Martin Luther King on August 28, 1963, talked about having a dream, yeah. in a dream, if you read the whole speech, he talked about the issues that we are faced with right now. He talked about voting. He talked about health care. He talked about police brutality. He talked about the whole criminal justice system. He talked about poverty. So what is going on in Washington today is not just about repealing what President Obama has done, and it is that but is also trying to bust up the dream of Dr. King. So we chose that day to call on ministers, 1,000 ministers, to come and stand up for the dream Dr. King laid out. Now, what a lot of folk is missing, let me give you two points on this. What a lot of folk are missing, Dr. King never held political office. Dr. King was not a governor, not a president, not a senator, not a congressman, not a councilman. Dr. King only spoke with the authority of a minister. That is why ministers ought to stand and defend what God used a minister to do for this country. You watch people in Congress stand up, my colleague, my colleague from this state, my colleague across the aisle. Martin Luther King was our colleague. Why are we being silent while they disassemble his dream? Second point, when they came to Washington in 1963, you talk about, well, Reverend, I'm going to try to get there, but it's so rough. Do you know how rough it was in 63? They could not rent a motel room until they got north of Virginia. They had to ride through a segregated south, sit in the back of buses, couldn't stop at most restaurants and get a cup of coffee. But they came, and because they came, you are working where you're working and living where you're living and doing what you're doing. And you got the nerve to talk about how hard it is for you to come. They took more hardship to put you where you are. You better come on and stand up so you can stay where you are. Point that I and I want y'all to catch Bishop Daughtry the, the the you know sometimes you have to seize the moment. I remember that we were fighting in New York City stop and frisk, where police would just stop our kids and frisk them. And a disproportionate amount was happening to us, and we said, wait a minute. Y'all can't harass us like that. And we began marching. And many in the legal community, Jonathan Moore and Attorney Hardy and them began fighting with Civil Liberties Union and other groups, uh, constitutional rights groups, to bring down stop and frisk. And one of the things even uh, Mayor de Blasio talks about now is we shook the world 
when we marched 75, 80,000 people down Fifth Avenue in a silent march. I remember we announced a silent march, some of the super duper militant, ooh, boo, boo crowd. Wow, I'm, I'm not being silent. The drama was what made the message go around the world. People said that night all over the world, do you realize 80,000 people came down Fifth Avenue and never said a word? We marched down Fifth Avenue where the rich and the powerful lived, marched by Trump's house. We know he was going to be in the White House then, but we marched by Trump's house. And by having a silent march, it showed a disciplined, focused people. Because if you get that amount of people to be silent, you can get more than that to vote. And you get more than that to boycott. They are used to big marches in New York. But they were not used to discipline with military precision. And the mayor talks about that now. How that really changed a lot. Well, let me tell you, the drama, we have never, I did a lot of research, Johnny Green. We have never had a minister's march. I mean, go through the books now. I went back and that turned us, sold on truth, did all that. We've never had it where they said a thousand ministers stood up for something. So when I look in the future, like I'm five years since Stop and Frisk went down. Five years from now, I want them to say in the middle of them talking about cutting Medicaid and rescinding health care and backing up on voting, wait a minute, a thousand ministers from everywhere stood up unprecedented and said, don't bust up the dream. If I'm you, minister, Reverend, Pastor, Bishop, Archbishop, Prophet, Prophetess. I would want to be one of those thousand. All you got to do is call 1-877-626-4651. If you don't go on the website and sign in, you can call and we'll put it, we'll sign you in on the website while you're on the phone. People say, well, I'm not a minister. Can I come? Yeah, I, I, everybody's invited, but I want a thousand ministers to lead that. Yeah. Yeah. I was reading in the book. You know, a lot of folk quote the Bible. But I want you all to read, and, and this is not my message, but I want you all to read later about how in Ezekiel 34 chapter, they talk about those shepherds that fatten themselves and don't feed the sheep. That's in the book. God puts you as shepherd, but a shepherd is not judged by how big his house is. I'm going out preaching this weekend in two cities, like I said. Preacher tell you, Doc, let me show you my office. Let me show you my house. Show you my car. You don't judge the leadership of a shepherd by how big the shepherd house is. You don't, be, be, you don't judge the leadership of a shepherd by the car he rides. You judge a shepherd's leadership by the condition of the sheep. If you fat and the sheep is starving, you are not a good shepherd. If you are a prophet and are not prophesying to people that are beat down and need help, then you are not a true prophet. Hello. God 
does not call prophets out of season. He calls you for the season he puts you in. God didn't send prophets after the fact. He sent them for the fact. And it's time for where are the leaders and the prophets in the age of Trump? Finding favor with man may be to the disfavor of God. Let me tell you, I, 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 I look at, I was telling someone on, on uh, my daily radio show this week. They said, well, Reverend, some of us are scared to maybe come with the preachers because we don't want to get some folk mad. I said, well, let me ask you something. If you are a Christian, are you a Christian? He said, yeah. I said, well, if you are a Christian, you're supposed to follow the Mosaic law. Is that right? Mosaic law is based on Moses. Now, Moses not only could talk to Pharaoh, he grew up with Pharaoh. He could have went in the back door at Pharaoh's palace and said, you know, Ramesses, me and you grew up together. We, you know, and I need you to do some things for me. I'd really like to get my people free, but if you give me a little daycare program, or if you give my two sons a job. Maybe we can work something out. But God told Moses, go to Pharaoh, you know him, and you know the address because I arranged for you to grow up in his house. Don't forget now, you wasn't born in his house. You was born a slave on your way to execution. And I interfered and gave your mama the savvy notion to hide you. Then when she couldn't hide you no more, she put you in a basket and laid you on water that I made. And I got the waves to navigate you right to Pharaoh's house. You didn't just happen to grow up there. I brought you there. <laughs> Reverend, watching me right now, wherever you came, God navigated you through. That junkie that you wasn't is because God brought you through the waters and guided that basket. You'd have been that guy sitting behind bars. You'd have been that junkie. You'd have been that one with ne no health care. God brought us another way. So don't you think he had a reason to deliver us so we could deliver others? You wasn't that smart. You wasn't that gifted. It was God that brought you. And if God called you, you need to answer that call and be a shepherd to the sheep and meet us in Washington on August 28th and stand up for a dream that made a way for you. Let me tell you, this week we've seen a lot of trouble. I'm going to deal with a lot of it on Politics Nation in the morning, but let me tell you something. We are now being told that in the middle, in the beginning of the week, I mean, you, you almost have a week or two of stuff in one day. We start the week now with the president saying that he would not have appointed the attorney general if he knew the attorney general was going to recuse himself. Now, what he's saying now is if I didn't know this man was going to handle my case, implying that he was going to be all right with me, I wouldn't have gave him the job. 
I ain't never heard nothing like that in my life. I wouldn't have appointed him if I knew he wasn't going to handle my stuff. And he met, said it recorded with the New York Times that he'd been calling fake news. Now, that, that ain't bad enough. They said, well, what about special counsel Mueller? Should he be allowed to go into your finance? Oh, no, no. Can't go into finances. That's the red line. That's like, Reverend Bartley, the police pull you over, and you said, you can check out everything, but don't go in the trunk. <laughs> well, then that means the police better go there first. Before we can get used to that, now they come out that Sessions met with the Russian ambassador talking about the election twice. So now they got Sessions in the crossfire. First he got thrown under the bus from the president, and now they done dragged him off the tracks and hit him with the bus coming the other way. So the White House spokesman Spicer say, y'all know what, I'm gone, I can't. I, I can't keep up with this. Y'all see me on Saturday Night Live, I'm out of here. But while all of this is going on, don't be distracted. That's why we go to Washington. They are confirming members of the administration. They're confirming judges. All of this while you are watching the dramas. They confirmed this week John Bush John Bush has been confirmed to the federal court in the Sixth, Sixth Circuit. Bush was the guy, he was a right-wing blogger and a right-wing jurist. He is one that compared Roe versus Wade to the Dred Scott decision. He's now a federal judge on the Sixth, Sixth Circuit, confirmed this week. Why y'all watching the funnies? They stacking the courts. And once you get a federal judgeship, you got it for life. Somebody got to stand up and protect the sheep while y'all running around worried about whether or not Spicer got a job or the other lady going to take the place. They are trying to ram through health care that the Congressional Budget Office has said will cost 34 million people their health insurance. Right now, people watching me are sitting up with diabetes, sitting up with legs amputated, arms amputated, and they will lose any coverage because of pre-existing conditions. And you running around talking about Spicer. Red man, what do you think about Spicer? Nothing. <laughs> I'm worried about Sister Smith's medicine. <laughs> well, you think rest sessions met with the Russians? I don't know. But I know Uncle Buddy Boy got to see the doctor. And if they renege, he will not have the insurance to cover his doctor's visit. God did not call me to gossip about Washington. He called me to speak truth to power. Look at our schools. I was in Chicago, all this violence in Chicago. One of the reasons that a lot of the young people are unstable 
is because of the whole question of them closing schools. You know they closed 50 schools in Chicago? People, if you go in another nation and the children have no schools in their neighborhood, have no summer jobs, have no recreational facilities, you will ask and say, what is wrong with this system? But when we come to the United States, to Chicago, we say, what's wrong with the children? No, what's wrong with this system? Close 50 schools. No programs for the kids. No after-hour learning. And many of us that are in the pulpit won't address it. Called by God. Scared to speak up. When I was growing up, we used to sing that song, God can't use no coward soldier. God and punks can't dwell in the same place. Then they're trying to, as they close the schools, privatize education. I want y'all to get this now. Randy Weingarten, American Federation of Teachers, she came out this week and talked about there is a racial history to this privatizing of education and charter movement. It started because people wanted to use public funds to pay for private charters to keep their kids out of the classroom with black kids. Now y'all get mad all y'all want. That's how it started. It started to keep us out of the schools with their children. So when the movement started to deal with Brown versus Board of Education, yeah, I was born on going forward. It was not that we felt there was something ex extraordinary about sitting with white folks. It was that we understood that if we wasn't in the room where they educated their kids, we were going to get an inferior education. That's what it was. Teach me what you teach your kids. So some of y'all talking about running around, y'all just want to be with white folks. No, we wanted quality. And in a racist society, you knew the quality was going to be where they put their children. It's like people talking about, well, I don't know why y'all fought to share a bathroom with white folks, and I don't know why y'all fought to uh, be able to go to a restaurant with them. I don't want to be around them anyway. If I pay taxes, the same tax they pay, and they build their restaurants on a block that the police going to protect, that I'm paying the police, and, and the sanitation man going to pick up their garbage, that I'm paying the sanitation man. But I'm going to pay all of their services, but I can't go. It ain't got nothing to do with them. got something to do with me. If I'm going to pay for it, I'm going where everybody else go. Uh, uh, well, I'm not in the system. You in the system. You sitting up there right now eating breakfast that the system said you can eat. Everything in your refrigerator was approved by the FDA. That's the system. Everything in the store you bought, there was a sales tax on it. Whether you got a Brooks Brothers suit or a dashiki, the system let you buy it and you paid the system to buy it. You get on the system's mass transit. I was in the car one day, a friend of mine in Atlanta. I ain't got nothing to do with the system. You're in the civil rights. I'm in the separatism. I ain't got nothing to do with that. Blah, 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 blah. And he stopped. That's what he stopped for. He's a red light. I said, I thought you ain't the system. Just keep going. Man, don't think about no red light. Just drive. 
white folk playing with the lights. You in the system. You just don't have the courage to stand up in the system. You got to have enough courage to stand up. That's why a lot of y'all deal with personal issues because you won't confront them. In an abusive relationship. And you're talking about the Lord will make a way. He'd already made a way. You see that dog? You got a cell phone with a moving van on the other side. God done made it. You ain't got some stuff you can not have to pray about. You need enough strength to just go and do something about it. You sitting around worried about things God done already answered. But you too afraid to embrace the answer. Lord, show me what to do. I done shown you. Now get up here and do it. But you want God to be your room service waiter. You want him to knock on the door and serve you in bed. Get up and grab and embrace and stand with the God that brings us above it all. Let me tell you something. I've been, I, I was telling some reporters the other night, I've been in the White House the last three presidents. This one called me. I ain't, I've not gone because he won't agree to a whole meeting. But I ain't never went to the White House impressed with the White House because I understood we built the White House and never got paid. So going in, I'm reminded that they are living on the prerogatives of our being exploited. And I am to represent those they exploit rather than be honored to be inside and enjoying the fruits of the exploitation. You got to decide which side do you own. Bible said no man can serve two masters. You can serve God or you got to serve the devil. Now, if you serve God, there is a price. This is my message today. There is a price if you serve God. But there's also a reward if you pay the price. Nobody in the Bible did God call that he didn't test and he allowed the opposition or the enemy to put something on you. Your reward if you could stand the test. Your reward is if you can fight the enemy. Every David had a Goliath. Everybody God used there were doubters, naysayers, liars, and backbiters. You sitting up at home dealing with issues with traitors in your own family. Judas watched every miracle and betrayed Jesus. And how did he betray him? By kissing him. So when he kissed him, they knew who Jesus was. Be careful who be kissing you. Because they might be the ones setting you up. But if you are standing for what's right, they can't set you up. They can only set you apart for God's blessing. You thought it was a setup. But God made it something other than what you thought. As I look this week, in Minnesota, white woman 
from Australia, shot and killed by a black cop and a black woman, the mother of Philando Castile, young black man killed by police in Minnesota on Facebook Live, went over and stood with the fiance of the young white girl that was killed, saying that y'all let the killer police go with me. And if you keep doing that, it's going to spill over to everybody. That's why you got to fight for what's right, because if you don't, it's going to enrapture the whole nation. I stood up for this young white girl being killed by a cop, a black cop, just like I stood up for Eric Garner, because this is not a fight about black and white. It's a fight about right and wrong. This is a moral fight. This is a fight about what is on the side of light or the side of darkness. This is about who is in the way of righteous or the way of the unrighteous. I was reading this week, drive my message home and let you go. And again, you that want to help the movement, or you that need prayer, or do you that need a way to get to Washington, call 1-877-626-4651, 1-877-626-4651. Our prayer activist is on the phone right now. I was reading this week, there was a king called Nebuchadnezzar. Now, I've preached this many times, but I looked at it different this week. Now, Nebuchadnezzar had a crowd that loved him and exalted him. And I thought about it watching this crowd in Washington right now. Sometimes you become so enthralled with yourself and so enamored with yourself till you start challenging God himself. So he challenged the sovereignty of God. And he said, I want some musicians, some composers to make some music for me. And I'm going to make an edict. If it was today, he said, I'm going to sign an executive order. That when you hear my music, I want you to bow to my God. That's what they're doing today, Bartley. They got music making you bow to the wrong God. When you were following God in the movement, we were singing, we shall overcome. When you was following God in the movement, you were singing, ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. When you was following God in the movement, Aretha was singing respect. James Brown was singing black and proud. But now the king's music is playing. And you're calling yourself niggas. And calling your mama a hoe and a bee. Because you're bowing to false God. Go in the studio and make me some music that'll beat down their self-respect. Go in the studio and make me some music that'll beat down their self-value. They're playing the music and you're bowing to a God that if you can tell yourself musically that you ain't nothing but a hoe, then you don't deserve Medicaid. If you can musically embrace that you are in rather than black and proud, you don't need the right to vote. They create a music of slavery for you. Right, 
We had music that would break chains. Now you have musical little uh, uh, entertainers that they put out there now that they wear the chain. Little court gestures. Worshiping golden calves. They even put the gold grids all in the mouth. Just grinning and skinning. Pants down, butt showing, gold chains, gold teeth. Nebuchadnezzar music. But the Bible says that one day Nebuchadnezzar got word. Some of the folk come to find favor. They always going to be people. They're going to find favor by telling on you. I just told you now a few minutes ago, if you go with God, you're going to get tested. If you stand up, you're going to get a poll. There are always going to be some, Johnny Green, that are going to run to the governor that's supposed to be your friend. They're going to try to find favor by telling on you. There are always going to be some botany that got the slip something in thinking they get a favor. Some of them don't even ask for nothing. They just want to be in the favor yeah. of those in power. Yeah. Yeah. They just want to be like you so small and insecure. Yeah. You just want somebody big to like you. Yeah. I know the man. Yeah. Folk tell me I, I got the governor's phone number. Yeah. So what? You don't call them and tell them nothing. I can reach him any time. Well, why ain't you reached him then? <laughs> Bragging about how you know folk. No sign that you get him to do anything. I know a guy just every day I'm down at the I'm down at the club with the wealthy. Ain't got a dime. Everybody up in the private club, millionaires. You on the number three train with an empty attache case. <laughs> a proper talking broke, hallucinatory guy. But one day, Nebuchadnezzar played his music. And the guy slipped over to him for favor and said, Almighty King, you know, they know you got to flatter some self-illusional, high, mighty person. You know, that, you know I, I was watching a guy yesterday on TV. Oh, I love President Trump. You know, you got Almighty King. I love the president. Yeah. Well, what about the president makes sense? I love the president. Almighty king. If it pleased the king, I just thought I would tell you that I noticed that every time they play the music, there are three guys down that you put over certain states that when they play the music, they don't bow down. And if you remember, King, you said that if we don't bow, that we'd be thrown in the fiery furnace. The king now, his ego is challenged. His power is challenged. His popularity is at stake. And his authority is questioned. So he can't let this go. He said, bring me those three. And he brought them and stood in front of the king, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he stood and looked at them. 
and said, I want to ask y'all a question. I want y'all to be careful with the answer now. You know that I have had composers create this music. And you know that I have said that when the music played all over my kingdom, that you'd bow to that music. And you do know that if the music plays, those that don't bow are going to be thrown into a fiery furnace. Now, since we got all that understood, I heard that the music plays and you won't bow. I tell you what, I'm not even going to go through no back and forth, he say, she say, I'm not going to call the witnesses to the stand. I'm just going to play the music. I ain't going to go by whether they lying, you lying, you did, you didn't. I ain't asking for no video. I'm not getting no intelligence report. I'm just going to play the music. And when I play this music, I want you all to know if you don't buy, I already got the furnace heated up. In fact, I'm so angry that I've heated it up seven times hotter than it's ever been heated before. And if you don't bow, I'm going to throw you in this furnace. The Bible tells me that they played the music. Some of y'all would have prayed that they would jam up the orchestra where the music wouldn't play. Some of y'all always looking for a way out because you don't believe in God. God ain't got to stop the devil's music. God ain't got to make an interference so you won't have to be thrown in the furnace. God can bless you after they've shot their best shot at you. If the music had jammed, it would have never been a miracle. If the music hadn't played, it would have never been in history. But God sat on the throne looking at this would-be king on his throne and said, go ahead and play your music. Play what you want because I can protect whoever I send. Play the music. Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego standing there. They heard the music. King said, I'm going to play it some more. Maybe your ears stopped up. You can't hear it. Maybe you got arthritis in the knees and you can't bow. Tell me why you won't get down. Somewhere in my mind, I can see the three guys huddle. Shadrach looking at Meshach and Abednego saying, what you think? Meshach said, I don't know about y'all, but I can't bow. Because when I was down, he lifted me. When I was sick, he healed me. When I was hungry, he fed me. Y'all do what you want, but I can't bow. Abednego said, well, I can't bow. Because when nothing was on my side, God touched me and brought me from a mighty long way. I don't care about the fire. I believe that God will make a way. Shadrach turned back and said, you can play your music but we won't bow. Now the king is furious. Throw them into the furnace. It was so hot, Bishop Daughtry, they said that those that were handling them were consumed with the flame. They come at you sometimes so hard that the folk coming at you get consumed in the flame of their hatred. worry about them, minister, for they going to be consumed putting you in the fire. But they ain't got what you got in you. Because if you go in the flames with God, the flames can't burn you. Don't panic in the flames. Some of y'all home right now in a fire, just stand up in the flames. Because the God I serve will cool you off in the midst of the flame. 
turn up the heat. You can't get it hotter than this. I ain't worried about your heat. I serve a God that you can't burn up. You can't burn out. God is still on the throne. King, with all his power, started looking and saying, wait a minute, something wrong. I thought we put three in there. I see a fourth one. And the fourth one, the fourth one looked like the son of God. I don't care what you do to me. We're going to keep fighting Esau because God promised me if they throw me in the flames, he's going to step in the furnace. I'm not out here by myself. God will meet you in the flames. God will make a way out of nowhere. God will lift you up. He'll turn you around. He'll make your midnight turn into day. Don't duck the flame. Wait for God in the middle of the flame. Everybody's singing. Everybody's singing. Everybody's singing. Hey, sing it like you mean it. Sing it like you mean it. Sing it like you mean it. Everybody's singing. Everybody's singing. Everybody's singing. Everybody's singing. Everybody's singing. Yeah, I'm open the doors of the movement. There may be someone here today yeah. hears us on the radio. Yeah. See us on the television, but never joined the National Action Network. We have all kinds of activities committees, auxiliaries you can work with to the degree and to the commitment that you can make. But you should be part of the movement. You should be part of an organized body in these times. If you're here today and not a member of Nash Action Network, I want you to just come down either aisle to me and let us sign you up as a member right now of the National Action Network, come on. Everybody's singing. Everybody's singing. Everybody's singing. 